Facts practice to 20, lesson 5.10. We can use addition and subtraction strategies to help us find sums and differences. Here are the strategies we have learned so far in grade one. We've learned to use counters, count on, count back, use related facts, draw a picture, use doubles, make a 10 to add, think 10 to subtract, or break apart to subtract. Use the strategy that will help you the best until you memorize your math facts. You may find that one strategy is easier for you to use than another. Then use the easy strategy. It depends on who it is. Some people may find using doubles easy. Some people may find counting on or counting back easy. Use the one that will help you the most. So let's practice some facts to 20. It says to add or subtract, we have 8 plus 2. Let's try counting on. We're only adding a 2, so we can start with the 8, the larger add-in, and count on 2. 8, 9, 10. Seven minus five. We can count back. We can start at the seven and count back five. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Some number is equal to nine plus five. We can start with the nine, the larger add in, and count on five. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 5 plus some number is equal to 8. We can use addition and count up to 8 and count on. We can start with the 5 and see how many fingers we needed to get to the 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. We needed 3. 11 is equal to some number plus 4. We can use a related fact and use subtraction. We can do 11 minus 4 to find the missing add end. We can start at 11 and count back 4. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 16 minus 9 is equal to some number. We can use a related fact of addition. Start with the 9 and count up to 16. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That was 7 fingers. 9 plus 7 is equal to 16, so 16 minus 9 is equal to 7. 12 plus some number is equal to 14. We can start at the 12 and count on to 14, 12, 13, 14, 2. 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. 6 plus 8. We could use counters. We could make 6 counters, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and make 8 more, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then count them. We have 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 5 plus 6, we can make counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We can count the counters. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 9 plus 3, we can count on 3. We can start at the 9 and count 3 more. 9, 10, 11, 12. 9 plus 3 is equal to 12. 6 plus 7, we could use doubles. We can think 6 plus 6 is equal to 12, so 6 plus 7 7 is 1 more than 6, so it must be 1 more than 12. It's 13. That's doubles plus 1. 
7 plus 8. We can use doubles again. 7 plus 7 is equal to 14. And 8 is one more than 7. So we can do doubles plus 1, that's 14, and 1 more is 15. Here we can just use doubles. 9 plus 9 is equal to 18. We could even use counters, couldn't we? We could make 9 counters and 9 more and then count them all. 13 minus 5. We can start at the 13 and count back to 5, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. That was 8 fingers. 13 minus 5 is equal to 8. 15 minus 6, we can make 15 counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we can cross off six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fifteen minus six is equal to nine. Nineteen minus nine. We can use a ten to subtract. Nineteen is a ten plus nine, isn't it? And if we take the 9 away, we're left with 10. And that would be using addition to help us subtract, wouldn't it? 17 minus 8, we can think 8 plus some number is equal to 17. We can start at the 8 and count up 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. That was 9. 8 plus 9 is equal to 17. We used a related addition sentence. 14 minus 7, we can think doubles. If we know 7 plus 7 is equal to 14, then we know 14 minus 7 is equal to 7. 16 minus 9, we can start at the 9 and count up to 16, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That was 7 fingers. 16 minus 9 is equal to 7. 13 minus 6. We could use a related addition fact. If we know that 6 plus 7 is equal to 13, then we know 13 minus 6 will be equal to 7. 15 minus 8, we can use a related addition fact. If we know that 7 plus 8 is equal to 15, then we know 15 minus 8 will be equal to that 7. 10 plus 3, we can start at the 10 and count on 3. 10. 11, 12, 13. 12 minus 6. We can use doubles or a related addition fact. If we know that 6 plus 6 is equal to 12, then we know that 12 minus 6 is equal to 6. 17 minus 0. We know that when we subtract 0, the number stays the same. The minuend stays the same. So it's still 17. 10 plus 10. We can use 10 counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 10 more counters. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And count the counters. Here we have 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. And that's a doubles, isn't it? We're adding the same addend. 10 and 10. 16 minus 8. We can use a related doubles addition sentence. If we know 8 plus 8 is equal to 16, 
then we know 16 minus 8 is equal to 8. Just use the strategy that you like to use the most. We can write or draw to explain. There are 12 ladybugs. Six ladybugs fly away. How many ladybugs are there now? So we can draw a picture to help us solve this. We can make circles for the ladybugs. There's 12 ladybugs, so we'll make 12 circles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And we'll pretend that those are our ladybugs. Six ladybugs fly away, so we need to cross off six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. How many ladybugs are there now? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six ladybugs now. There are 14 cookies on a plate. Nine cookies are chocolate, the rest are oatmeal. How many cookies are oatmeal? So what is it asking us to find? It's asking us to find how many cookies are oatmeal out of the 14 cookies that are on the plate. And we can use the 14 and the 9 to help us find the answer. It says the rest are oatmeal, so we need to find the difference between the 14 and the 9. We need to do 14 minus 9 to find how many oatmeal cookies there are. We can make circles for the cookies. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12, 13, 14. We can cross off nine of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we can count how many are left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means five of the cookies are oatmeal. And nine are chocolate. Nine plus five is equal to 14, so we know we did it correctly. Tim has 15 hats. Lisa has six hats. How many more hats does Tim have than Lisa? So what is it asking us to find? We need to find how many more hats that Tim has than Lisa has. We need to find the difference between 15 and six. So that means we're gonna be doing subtraction. We can use the 15 and six to help us. So our number sentence, our subtraction sentence would be 15 minus 6. We can draw hats or we can just make little lines to represent the 15 hats. We can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And each little line would be a hat. And we can cross off six of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many are left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tim has nine more hats than Lisa. We can fill in the blanks to write an addition fact. We can make our own word problem by just filling in the blanks with numbers that will be true. There are blank cats on the bed. Blank more cats get on the bed. How many cats are on the bed now? So we can put any numbers into the blanks as long as we make it true. We could say there are five cats on the bed and two more cats get on the bed. How many cats are on the bed now? And we can write the addition sentence. It tells us to write an addition fact. So if we do what it says, we have to have an addition fact. 5 plus 2 is equal to, we can count on, 5, 6, 7, 7. There are 7 cats on the bed. We could put any numbers we want in here, do the addition, and find the correct answer. Our next lesson is count by ones to 120. Can you count by ones to 120? Can you count by ones to 100? That's lesson 6.1. And that's going to be the second volume 
of the grade one math books. We're moving on to the second part now, the second book. I hope I'll see you there and keep practicing. You can get flashcards or make your own flashcards to practice your math facts because you need to memorize them to be good at math. I'll see you next time. Bye.